Okay, so Pi News episode 14. Uh, saw a really interesting article on the Raspberry Pi blog, and this is all to do with the Raspberry Pi case fan. Uh, and this is designed to go with the existing case uh, that the Raspberry Pi Foundation released, and uh, it didn't have any active cooling. So uh, this guy set out to make a fan uh, to fit into the existing case and make it super easy to fit in. And uh, you can see there's a heat sink there as well. Going down through the article, it's really interesting to see the sort of thought process and, and how it all went. You can see there's holes on here. The holes made very little difference. But have a read through the article because, as I say, it is it is a good read. And uh, you can see all the airflow tests and things like that to see how it was going. But the interesting bit is the breakthrough bit. So suddenly I've made a big difference by drawing air from around the USB and Ethernet connectors. The lid had been left unmodified, but still achieves the cooling effect I was looking for. Next was to reduce the direction changes in the airflow and try to make the duct simpler. So it, it's just all explaining how it, how it works. I've ordered one now because I, I really like the idea of it. I like the idea of it works to an unmodified existing Raspberry Pi case, although I didn't have one of those. So I've ordered both. I ended up ordering them from OKDo. OK uh, which was the cheapest one I found. So £12.33 is the whole lot uh, because the uh, Raspberry Pi case fan, so £3.88 and £3.90. Obviously, you got your VAT on that. But also, I went through Quidco and saved like 2 or 3% on that, so it was about 40p off that as well. Okay, so next up was an interesting project. Uh, it's not something that's been made. It's something that's been modelled uh, on a computer. So Raspberry Pi 4 with NVMe SSD support. Uh, all ports are on the back side except SD card and USB 3 which are on the front 80 by 80 millimeter fan is inside and it just looks like a cool project uh, I would certainly like to see one of these in the flesh very interesting uh, people in the comments are definitely uh, showing their interest another project this one has been built uh, and this is OrthoPi and uh, I had to look into this to see, so an ortho keyboard, ortho linear keyboards are a unique type of keyboard with a diehard group of followers within the mechanical keyboard community. The non-staggered keys make for an interesting typing experience that is highly sought after. Obviously I've used older computers in the past and really like the sort of raised keyboards and everything, but this is going another level. Now, the person on this Reddit has showed in detail how they've done it and how they've connected it up. You can see this is the inside of a Pi 400, that's what, that's what the board looks like, so it looks very different to a Raspberry Pi 4. And you can see here from this picture, everything looks very neatly done, it's a, it's a, it's a really nice professional project. And it goes into lots of detail, I love to see all these close ups and things like that, the way they've done various different things. So I found this as well. Uh, I was uh, going to overclock my Pi 400, which I, I mean, I've, I've done it, but haven't really played around with it yet. So all I've done is put in other operating systems that are already overclocked. And and so I, I guess I've overclocked my Pi 400 doing it that way, but I haven't sort of concentrated on what levels I can get and the cooling and everything like that. But I found this overclock your Raspberry Pi, and this is just a web uh, link, and I'll put a link in the description. So you can put in the model of Raspberry Pi that you've got, uh, and so in the case of Pi 400, click on that, hit next step, and uh, you can say medium booster, heatsink recommended. Well, you can't use a Pi 400 without heatsink, uh, so it obviously applies to the other Pis. Maximum performance, active cooling recommended. Well, there isn't really a way of adding active cooling to the Pi 400, although I've been kind of looking at it and thinking about some ideas to see if I can get it even cooler. I mean, you can obviously put it on top of a fan. Uh, so if I click on maximum performance and hit next step, so you can see here, I understand applying, so there's all these sort of warnings, so let's click on that. And you can see here, so force turbo equals 1, over voltage equals 8, and arm frequency equals 2200. I reckon I can go higher than that. I don't know if there's a limitation on how high it goes. So if we click on the Raspberry Pi 4 uh, and have a look at that as well, so we'll stick on maximum performance, next step. Uh, and yeah, I would agree with that. These are settings that I've used in the past. I've found that if you go lower than over voltage equals 8 uh, with a 2147 overclock on the 8 gig Pi 4, uh, it, it's troublesome. So uh, yeah, I would, I would echo that. But if you want to go higher, obviously you need to up this over voltage and I'll be playing around with that on the Pi 400. Another exciting bit of news, we had the amazing uh, Raspberry Pi OS update the other day, uh, which was really good. Printer support was excellent. I was using it, I had to print out a load of postage for my wife uh, for various different Christmas cards going all around the world. And uh, I used my Pi for that and the printing didn't have to do anything at all, didn't have to uh, change any settings or anything like that. So that's a really good thing. 
pleased with the YouTube performance as well. Uh, and also the audio had a message from Grey Duck uh, from the Pi Labs team who said, uh, just wanted to let you know that the Raspberry Pi OS transition to Pulse Audio fixes the Bluetooth audio issues that existed in Twister OS. That was the only real bug we had left to squash. So today is a good day. So uh, they've also worked on even more updates on Twister OS. And there's quite a few on this. So I need to probably do this separately. Um, but uh, if I go into the change log, upgraded Twister OS patcher to YAD version, added support for XFAT formatted drives, which I like, added Twister OS diagnostics app. I need to have a look at that. Fixed an issue affecting certain wine games with latest Mesa driver update, added application menu shortcuts for wine tricks, uh, improved panel tray icon refreshing, and updated readme's. Twister OS is still my favorite OS on Raspberry Pi. I use it very often and uh, it doesn't disappoint me. And uh, last bit of news, I've uh, got one of the new MacBook Airs, one of the M1 models, and it is phenomenal. I, I bought it, it's kind of a Christmas present from my wife, uh, well, partly a Christmas present from my wife, partly the, uh, the channel is paying for it, but um, it, it's just, it's phenomenal. Everything about it is, is incredible. Uh, and uh, it's, computing is gonna change. From this time onwards, uh, it's gonna spell a lot of changes for computers. I know some people don't like it. Uh, it's good to have these options, but the performance they're getting, especially for things like video editing, and I do a lot of video editing, uh, the performance is incredible. The battery life is amazing, very low energy. There's a lot to love about it, but I've had to box it up and I'll uh, get it out around about Christmas time and start using it properly. But uh, I won't stop doing Pi stuff. Uh, this, in fact, will be more to help me create Pi content because you're not really gonna do proper video editing uh, on the Pi. I certainly wouldn't be able to release as, as many videos as I do if I was. But uh, anyway, I hope you like all that. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.